So now that you know what a significant figure is, what it represents, our next job is for you to learn how to look at a number and count or determine how many significant figures or how many significant digits are actually in that number. So we've got four different numbers that we're gonna practice this with. And I'm gonna start by writing the rules for counting significant figures. And as we write these rules out, we're gonna practice them with our first example. So the first step in counting significant figures is to locate within the number, locate the first non-zero digit. And that would be reading from left to right, the first number that you come to, so reading from left to right, the first number that you come to that's not a zero. And I'm gonna highlight them. So in this first example, our first non-zero digit from left to right is, is the five. That is a significant figure. So this digit is a sig fig. We're gonna call them sig figs. Then what you do next depends on whether or not the decimal point has been written into the number. Of course, all numbers have a decimal point somewhere, but the decimal point is not always written down. So here the decimal point is written, but in this number, even though we know that there's a decimal point here, the decimal point has not been written down. So what we do next depends on, yes, you can see the decimal point or no, you cannot see the decimal point. If you can see the decimal point, so if the decimal point is written in the number, then it's actually pretty easy. All of the digits to the right of that first significant figure are also significant. So for this example right here, because we can see the decimal point, it is written, then all of the digits to the right of our five are also significant digits. So in this first example, we have a total of four sig figs, the five, the zero, the two, and the two. Let's practice with our next example. So starting back over at the, the top of the rules. Locate the first non-zero digit, reading from left to right, that's a five. Step two says, if the decimal point is written, and in this number, that decimal point has not been written down, which means that this rule does not apply to this particular example. When the decimal point is not written down, if no decimal point has been written, then what you have to do is locate the last, going from left to right, locate the last non-zero digit. And that digit is also significant. So this digit is a sig fig. Let's look at our example. Going from left to right, the last non-zero digit is going to be the two. So this is the last digit that we come to before we get to a bunch of zeros. So we'll highlight that one as well. That's also a sig fig. And then continuing on with that rule number three, all of the digits in between are also significant figures. So all of the digits in between, and we're referring to in between the last and the first, all of the digits in between are also significant. So back to our example, we only have one digit in between the five and the two, that that digit is significant. So these zeros at the end are not significant figures. And this number, 50200 milliliters, this has a total of three sig figs. 
So let's, um, let's, these are all of the rules. Let's apply them to our next example, 5.020 times 10 to the sixth gram. So this is one that's written in scientific notation. How are we gonna handle that? We're gonna treat it exactly the same way as our other examples. Start by locating the first non-zero digit going from left to right, that's a five. If the decimal point is written, yes it is, all of the digits to the right are significant. So that means all of these digits are significant. Now the 10 to the sixth part is not part of the measurement of the number. This is just expressing the magnitude of the number, how big it is. So we don't include this when we're looking at counting significant figures because again, this is only expressing the magnitude, not the accuracy or the precision. So this number 5020 are the significant figures. This number has four sig figs. And what about our last example down here, 502 cats. So before we jump into this, I'm actually gonna tell you right away, this is actually a tr kind of a trick question. Let's start by pretending like it's not a trick question. So we always wanna start by locating the first non-zero digit and then ask ourselves, can we see a decimal point? We cannot see the decimal point, in which case we should locate the last non-zero digit and everything in between. So this looks like it has three sig figs. However, that is not true. That is not correct. Let me erase this. Um, this number has an infinite number of significant figures. Now you might be saying, what? How is that possible? Significant figures only apply to measured numbers. They only apply to a measured number, a number that we get with some sort of measuring device like a ruler or a graduated cylinder or a balance. How do we count 502 cats? Well, we line them up and we start counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 502 cats is not a number that was obtained from a device. It was a number that was counted. Counted numbers have infinite significant figures. Counted numbers have infinite significant figures And this just simply means that we know there's no uncertainty in this number, 502 cats. There are exactly 502 cats, not maybe 501 or maybe 503. Somebody took the time to count all the cats and we are 100% confident that there are exactly 502. There's no uncertainty in that number at all. So we could say that that number that has, um, because it has no uncertainty, it has an infinite number of significant figures. So when you're counting sig figs, you should always double check the units that are attached to the number and determine whether the number is a measured number or a counted number. When it's a counted number, there are always going to be an infinite number of significant figures. When it's a measured number, then you will use these rules to determine how many sig figs there actually are.